Minister, how are you doing? What's up, fam? Can you hear me? Sorry, had to unmute there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Red had me. Hey, mute. buddy. Hey, man. So it's pretty interesting. Um, Reddit. Yeah, it's uh, now it's just a wedding game. I have terrible feedback in my mic. Uh, not on my side. <laughs> like I hear you 10 seconds afterward, twice. <laughs> oh, okay, yep. My headset is, I'm not experiencing that right now. But um, for everybody watching, welcome, hi. Well, we're currently getting set up and we are actually just waiting to have everything going correctly. Uh, we were asked by GameStop themselves to not videotape on their property as of right now. And we're going to respect that. And we are currently waiting for Pink Cats on Asset to get set up across the street. So we're in public domain and still upholding their wishes. So we're currently waiting on that uh, in a moment. Otto will jump in and hopefully the feedback issue will be fixed. <laughs> so how's everybody doing today? Everybody hyped? Hello? Yeah, I, man, I can hear you, but I'm hearing like three of you, like 10 seconds apart. <laughs> um. Let's see how we can fix that. Uh, probably. I'm going to rejoin. I'm going to rejoin real quick. I'm yeah. And rejoin. <laughs> All right. Good morning, San Diego. How's everybody doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, guys. I will... Hi, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. I see Ren is on here. Hey, Larry. Ren, I like your your avatar there. It's uh, Bucky from the Avengers. Oh, wait. You know, I realized I have uh, this on in the other room, so I should probably... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> or turn off the volume on my TV. But um, so I know uh, everyone is excited for the shareholders meeting. That's uh, that's coming up. Um, wait, I'm getting feedback from somewhere. Oh, I just realized what this is. So, okay, funny story. The hot stonks guy. Um, I watch his stream every day on YouTube in the background. Oh, the level and, two guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, him. And uh, so that's been playing on my TV. And so I guess he's streaming this right now so I can hear myself in the background. So I should probably go lower the volume on my TV. <laughs> I'll be right back. Sure. The, the, everybody looking, uh, watching right now, and everybody else streaming, thank you for tuning in. I'm in. Touchdown. I'm in. So... I had the um, I had the stream playing in our Discord, 
and it was playing oh. on the live at the same time. So it was, just, <laughs> it was pretty wonky. I think we're good now. I think we're fixed. Yeah. So I just wanted to maybe, if you guys don't mind, we could talk a little bit about um, about what to expect at the shareholder meeting because I know um, a lot of people have might not have necessarily uh, attended one or even really you know heard of one or, or know what it's all about. And so I think it's really important that we manage expectations here. Um, well, I honestly think that we're not going to hear a lot of groundbreaking things in the sense of um, the short positions, as in we've received X amount of votes. We're not going to hear that today. I'm, I'm fairly sure about that because they're doing a separate filing in a couple of days. So I expect that they hear it then. What I am expecting to hear today is who's going to become the new CEO or um, what they're going to do with the NFTs, for example, because I don't know a lot about that. And I'm kind of exciting what they're going to do with it. I know it's in the Ethereum realm, so it's a lot of data stuff. But other than that, I'm, I'm expecting a sort of roadmap of the company, where they're going to go, how they're going to do it, but not get into too much, uh, too many detail because it's only 50 minutes. Yeah. So I'm also, I'm also interested in the NFT stuff that's going on. I feel like I've been so entrenched in uh, just market BS um, <laughs> that I haven't heard a whole lot of like what the company is doing. You know, like we all know they're in a great position to. Um, kind of have the Phoenix scenario, right? But but the things that they're going to be doing from here on out are, are huge. So one of the things that I'm looking for in this meeting is what was the expectation, especially when it gets to earnings report, what was the expectation for earnings at the beginning of the year? You know, like what's their mm. typical Q1 earnings versus now? Um, and this to see what performance. Yeah, yeah, I'm really, I'm really expecting this year to be massive uh, just with, even the recent, you know, literally the past three months, um, or the, yeah, past, if, the first three months of the year is what I meant, first quarter. Yeah, yeah, but if you look at um, everything that basically Wall Street bets and Reddit and RGME, our super song, everybody has done, you saw, you saw a lot of people who uh, earned big, they haven't cashed out, but they thought, you know what, I'm already high up on cash so i'm gonna buy nintendo switches and a lot of games and i'm gonna donate that to children's hospitals and we're gonna help other people and we're gonna donate to gorillas and all sorts of weird stuff and you also have mr mm -hmm. beast who bought out a GameStop twice now so i haven't heard about that oh yeah i saw it yesterday that mr beast bought out another GameStop completely so on, on the earnings report itself, I'm expecting it's it's going to be big. See, I think uh, we should manage expectations here because we're also dealing with a post-pandemic situation. Um, like I know things have opened up a lot more in, in the States and maybe in, in some parts of Europe, but there are still uh, a lot of areas, you know, Canada included, and even some parts of the States where um, a lot of stores, especially storefronts, are still recovering from the past year and a half. Hmm. So I think that whatever numbers they provide, we have to take that in the context of a post-pandemic situation. And so take those numbers with a grain of salt. So I think that even if the earnings are not as high as expected, um, or, or as high as people might think they, they should be or could be, I think the pandemic will have a lot to do with that as well. So I think um, we shouldn't we shouldn't expect anything huge. I mean, obviously, if we have amazing earnings, that's, that would be excellent. But I think what would be really interesting is to compare the earnings from this year with the earnings from, let's say, the past three or four years for the same time period, mind you, because we always have to look at the post um, Christmas sort of fiscal mm -hmm. earnings. There's always mm -hmm. a you know, big run up of, of purchases prior to Christmas and the holidays. And then afterwards things slow down. If the uh, earnings is similar enough to those from previous years, even if it doesn't surpass it, I think that's actually better news because that's showing the potential for how much GameStop could make 
in a situ in a post COVID situation. So imagine if things were actually going well. That's a good point. Yeah, you've got to compare, you know, make sure we're comparing apples to apples. So a Q1 year over year, looking at Q1, 19, 20, 21, um, naturally 21 is going to speak volumes if it's the same, right? Because exactly. you had all that stuff happen in the past year where people had an issue um, even getting out to a physical location. So that you're, you're absolutely right there, Larry. Uh, I, I, I definitely if they see where you're coming from. Um, that being said, I do still expect to see a better, better report being pushed out. Um, I expect them. I, I, I'm expecting them to break expectations. Um, Likewise. So, so that's we'll what see. I'm hoping for. Yeah. The thing is with me, I, I, I personally believe that due to COVID, they already numbered in a norm nominal amount that they expected to lose. Like for example, if I expected to win 2 million this uh, in a normal year, and this is COVID, okay, numbers are gonna be skewed, numbers are gonna be a little bit different. This year we're gonna go for 1 million. I believe they, they've calculated it in, in some way, shape or form, but I'm not sure if they have. It's purely speculation on my part. Well, we certainly will see. Um... Just interested to see what price action is going to do today. Yeah, and speak, speaking of price action, what did you think of the past few days? So, really, the the I, I like that. I can't remember his name. Um, he's got a username. He's been doing the exponent, like the log function of the daily floor. Exponential floor guy. Yeah. Yeah, exponential floor guy. I, I really wish I could give him a freaking shout out. Wait, um, let me check real quick. I like that because you can't it's it's easier to argue in favor of what the floor is versus what the ceiling because you don't i mean the daily highs can have a totally different chart than the daily lows um and so it's interesting to see where that run-up is coming and and with how freaking i mean you're not just talking about like a week or two with that you're talking about being pretty spot on, you know, with where we are today. Now, that being said, even the lows, how that low is still the username getting is a new high. JTH1. He's the guy who's doing the logarithmic uh, exponential floor. Okay. I so think I, I saw am... a comment somewhere uh, where he mentioned he's like a, a, a Nord norsk or something so he could be from the same part of europe as you ren i'm sorry you you brought broke up for me there a little oh, bit sorry i was saying i um i think i saw a comment from him saying that he's from somewhere in northern europe as well so look at all these northern europeans contributing to the community yeah there used to be a saying here in the netherlands wherever there's trade there are dutch <laughs> well you guys invented the stock market I know. <laughs> VOC. So I, yeah, so a huge shout out to him um, or her for, for doing all of that. And, and yeah. it just, it just blows my mind how we can backtrack that for, for months and still see that's that same trend. Um, the fact that yesterday, I mean, there was a, there was a really good, point that somebody made about like or someone someone was responding to one of my posts or to the post that I made yesterday about um, all of this action we're seeing right here is, is more than likely someone someone getting slapped with a bill and they're gonna have to have to cover it um, one of the I guess one of the arguments that was posed was just when it hit 300 um, there were a bunch of options that would need to be hedged and if they were unhedged it could be people that were just you know, any positions that were trying to be covered hmm. for those options trades. The, the only problem is this spike was going from, you know, in the morning, I think the first candle was hitting around, it was actually bouncing between like 287 and just under 300. So potentially, I would say, you know, potentially there. Um, but this thing flew from 290 to 300 and then even from 300 up to... 320 on that same 10 minute candle. Um, 
And that was a lot of volume coming in. I, I could see, I could see, you know, the, the odd one or two transactions or one or two candles with, um, with typical volume breaching that 300. And then once you hit 300, seeing, you know, them start to hedge, but this looked a lot more like, okay, you've got to run up here. And for the first three 10 minute candles of that day, uh, yesterday you had, you had all out buying. Like that was, to me, that was, that was somebody's getting, somebody's getting called. Uh, I don't really think it was the options um, hedging. And what that's telling me today is, as we stay between this 300, 350 mark, um, I know um, Hero was putting something in um, or, or put something in our Discord about about the uh, contracts that are outstanding right now. Like, dude, there's a bunch of contracts between 300 and 350 and then even above 350 to 400. So it will be really interesting to see um, at what point they do start to hedge and how that, how that affects into the price. Yeah, at this point, I'm. I keep seeing so many conflicting things. I see people saying, "Oh, it's uh, it's options. It's not options. It's FOMO. It's retail." But at this point, I don't think we might be the ones driving the price. We're just. Um, if you look at Roaring Kitties um, or Roaring Kitty DFE's uh, Twitter, and if you look at that, all the songs, all the things he posts, it's all about being stuck. Like um, yeah. the one from, uh, what was it called? Reservoir Dogs, Stuck in the Middle with You. The other one was something with Stuck. And it keeps going on. And for some reason, I keep thinking, okay, maybe it's that the short position is actually, they're totally stuck in the position they're in. They can't get out of it. And there's, there's nothing they can do anymore. And that is currently driving the price. There was, uh, to that point, there was another really good post that was put out about these series of flash crashes that we've had, right? So mm -hmm. I would, if you go back to January and you're looking at January, the peak, and then you're looking at where, where it tanked, I mean, the whole thing all the way down, let's say, I would say like the 350, 400 mark is when, I don't remember exactly when they slapped down um, the buy uh, side. Like when did Robin Hood turn off buying? Does anybody I remember that? have the, European chart for me, it's 467 is the highest in Euro. Okay. So I, I'd say about four, 460 or 480, something along those lines. Okay. So shortly after that, they turned down the buy side and you tanked to what, 40? It was like a 10%, at least mm. 10%. Um, so those crashes are getting smaller and smaller, but arguably the first... Uh, the first crash in January wasn't necessarily a flash crash. Like I don't think it was market makers pumping out shares quicker than than people could buy them. Mm. Um, so if you look at the crash on March 10th, which was somebody dubbed that Mario Day, like Mario Bounce Day, um, and you see that 50% drop, and then you look at what happened yesterday being only what was it? I don't even know the math off the top of my yeah, head. 340 yeah, yeah. to 280. So sixty, yeah, sixty-ish uh, bucks. I know what you mean. The the drops 17%. are getting smaller and smaller. But what was interesting, like somebody pointed out, um, so you have Mario Day, March tenth, mm -hmm. and then DFV posted Luigi. Yeah, um, yesterday. So it's almost <laughs> like Mario Mario Day, and then the dip on on March tenth was Mario Day. And now the the brother dip is, uh, and and you know, arguably not as significant, right? Um, as the first one, just like Luigi's not quite as significant as Mario. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just yeah, the, yeah. the cryptic stuff that you can pull from this is just unreal. Yeah, but only if you uh, if you look at the flash crashes. I saw a picture earlier today or yesterday, and it was about the flash crashes. And if you look at January, we crashed from 460 to $40. Then in March we dipped from three three fifty somewhere somewhere along those lines back to one hundred and twenty and one hundred and thirty and now yesterday we had three hundred and forty four we dipped sixty and we by the end of the day it was less than forty so mm. there is a case to be made at least for me in uh, in my mind by the logic of that the ammo that they can 
throw at this, the money right. they can throw at this. It's going to be less volatile. It's going to be less and less that they can actually throw up against this. And the impact that it has once it is thrown is because the 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 history of these crashes, right, is to sell off a large enough position hmm. that makes the investor, the, t the average investor, convinces them that there's a big enough movement happening and they should get out now. Okay. Yeah. All of that is organized around profit taking and and fear of like the fear of loss. Okay. Yeah. So if you do that once in a blue moon on an unsuspecting stock um, stock, you can get away with it. You can get away with it and make it seem like, okay, these, this could be people, you know, maybe there is a large position that moves 10%. And so you see a 10% drop and then people follow behind and they start selling and now it's 12% drop, 15% drop 20 and who knows where it could end. Um, I think the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic in March, 2020, we saw this with a lot of, I mean, the, the, I don't remember exactly what it, but there were stocks that dropped 10% in a day. And you mean uh, in, uh, you mean in April, 2020, when the entire market basically dipped down yeah. half at minimum. So we don't know if things were um, necessarily like f triggered flash crashes or what was, what was legitimately, you know, consider people selling because they were afraid versus people triggering a flash crash. But the point is the same. The, the panic sell is, is intended to domino effect yeah. and get other people to panic sell. But once you've seen it this many times, it's like the effect that that starts to have is diminishing. And that's exactly what we're seeing. You go from a 50% drop to a 17 and percent drop to the next time they can only short whatever you have, um, whatever they have, they're going to go in and purchase, right? And they mm. send the stock up and then they can immediately take those shares that they just purchased, use them drop to them. cover, or you can turn right around and drop them again. Yeah. And so if the effect is a net zero, which it was, you go from 300, 330 back down to 300. It went to two. I think that low, lowest candle there was just about 280 and then right back up to 300. So the net effect is zero. And that mm. shows you that it's not, it's not even it's not working. working. <clears throat> yeah, and also if you look at the OBV, it didn't even dip. The yeah, 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 exactly. So, but it, to that, it, but to that same extent, if you look at let's let's for example compare January because when it crashed in January, I panicked. I was like, okay, I lost a lot of money right now, and like four or five months later, it's like, hey, it's crashing. Oh, discounts, sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. The fun yeah. fact is that normally, under normal circumstances, on a normal stock, under normal investors, it would be, oh, people are selling, therefore I'm getting out. But with GME and other, well, I hate to call them meme stocks, but popular stocks like AMC, GME, BlackBerry, Nokia, all those others, they sort of have the same type of investors right now. They have mm -hmm. people who expect this to happen, therefore it's no longer effective. Educated. It's like, have, yeah, that it's... Uh, it's like element of surprise that they normally have and the thing that they normally use to actually gain a profit from that situation is gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually I do have, so I have all of my notes here, um, from when I did the, the house of cards and what you just said reminded me of something. So you know how we have, so you have all these people that are starting to, to catch on, right? They're mm. starting to figure out what's going on. Um, when I wrote the House of Cards, I was talking specifically about the the short sale indicator. Yeah. Right. So Wes came in and he literally dropped that bombshell. And while I was looking these these violations up, and um, basically they're marking these these as long when in fact they're short sales. And I think I kind of exhausted that in the House of Cards with the number of companies that were doing that. But one thing that I didn't um, focus too much on was the naked, naked short selling side of that. So it's one thing to say, we're going to sell the stock and market as, um, long when it should be short, but people are also becoming more aware now of how many of these transactions and those same ones that I was talking about are immediately followed with, Oh, by the way, those stocks that you marked long, you also didn't borrow them and you didn't even make an effort 
to make sure that you could borrow them. Um, and so there are so many of these companies because I saw a, a video the other day, uh, the um, chairman of um, Interactive Brokers coming out and saying, um, oh, what did he say? Like, no, this is impossible or, you know, the, mm, this, this can't you know, happen. borrowing guidelines. And it's like, dude, BS. OK, because every single one of these, uh, I mean, I've got a list. This is that entire yeah, these are my house of cards notes, 15 pages here. And on, on literally every other one, um, I've got underlines like failure to deliver, fail to deliver, I'm trying to get my camera set up. Um, all of those fail to delivers are accompanied with a, a failure to borrow. So this is, this, this is Dr. T's book, right? And this is why everybody up to this point knows that these guys are just pulling stuff out of their butt. Because yeah. it's the same, it's the same system, and and we know it now. So you're marking a short, you're marking a stock as short or as long, when it should be short, um, and then you're you're not even making sure that you're borrowing the share before you do that. Because if think about think about it, if they went and they actually made the effort to borrow a share, you're creating a paper trail that you actually borrowed the share, or at least there's the assumption that you can find the share. But if you if you borrow that and then you turn right around and you mark it as a long sale, there's an immediate contradiction. However, if you fail to locate the share, you're still in the dark. If you don't let anybody know that you've, you've located this share, then you're in the dark. So it makes it easier to mark it as a long mm -hmm. because because nobody's going to say, you know, it, it'd be like. Um, it, it would be like, I don't I don't even know a good example. To describe it, but but it's, but it's the, a difficult subject to actually concise really quickly into something understandable. Yeah, just off the top of your head. But the the point being, the the best way and the way that you should do this, the way that you should go about it is if you're shorting a stock, you need to find a borrow. You need to make sure that the borrowed stock is actually there and available, and mm -hmm. then you have to mark that stock once you sell it. You have to mark it as a short sale. Okay. Yeah. If if you borrow the sh if you don't borrow the share, and you mark it as a short sale, Fender is going to come right behind you and say, "Okay, you sold this, but but where's your borrow? Where's the proof of borrowing?" So the easiest way for these people to to get through or get away with all of this is to to not only mark the short uh, mark the sale as a long share uh, or a long sale, but to also fail to locate it because there's literally no paper trail at that point. And then by the time this thing hits a fail to deliver, however, however long, um, yeah. there's there's such a small amount of paperwork to document. Was that a fail to deliver for a short position? Was it a fail to deliver for a long position? Because now you have these weird like, why should you fail to deliver on a long position? It's uh, failing to deliver what? on every side at this point. On every side. So the fact that the fact that people have this information now and they can see what we saw yesterday. And they can put two and two together and they're just like, that's why I said I was Zen with all this. It's like, dude, we're in such a, we're in such a good position um, because they can't, they can't do anything more than what they're doing right now. And we know what they're mm. doing. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, to jump in um, and speak a little bit about the shareholders meeting and what to expect. Cause I think um, that's important given that uh, it's happening soon. And, and this is something new for, for a lot of eight. So, um, if we could just pull up um, what we just had about the 8K, my comment about the 8K um, filing and uh, the vote tally. So normally what will happen at a shareholders meeting is um, the votes will, you know, people will vote, but there won't be an official vote count right away because all this is done by a third party. So uh, last year, if we scroll down a little bit on, so this is a form 8K that we stock filed last year. And if we scroll down a little bit more, um, it should be, yep, right there. So it's like that that first uh, part right there, um, where it says on June 7, on June 12, 2020. So last year, the company's shareholder meeting was held on a Friday and uh, the, voting company or the, the company that was um, auditing the, the votes was First Coast Results. And they didn't provide the final vote tabulation until June 17th, which is three business days after. 
and then GameStop filed their 8K the next day, with which is this right here with the final um, vote count. So last year there was about 66% um, votes coming in of the total shares. So we can expect the same thing this year. And I believe uh, someone, I can't remember who, um, contacted uh, GameStop and they received an email. Um, and in that mm -hmm. email response, they basically said the same thing, that uh, they'll be filing an 8K within four business days. So we shouldn't yeah. expect any you know, big, big news today at, at the shareholder meeting um, with respect to vote. Yeah. So so this the shareholder meetings are usually these high level summaries of of what the company's outlook is and what actions they're planning to take so you may get some you know some little easter eggs um as far as them giving hints to what what might be coming this year things that are coming out soon um but as far as the nitty-gritty details for for those that are that are waiting for someone to be like the short position the short interest on the, you're not you're probably not going to get that um I, I highly doubt it even with the circumstances this year um you may get a little breadcrumb as far as the voter turnout they might be like you know we had a really good voter turnout or something but as far as the details of that you you're right i think you need to look at the that 8k um which should be out within a few days after the meeting the the biggest thing i think one of the the biggest things i'm looking for out of the shareholder meeting is the overall direction of the company you know what are their plans going to be what are, are there going to be any um changes with the board like you know big decisions that could be that could indicate you know uh, a complete redirection i'd like to hear them talk about e-commerce and what their plans are for e-commerce uh, in particular, utilizing the the supply chain that they have. So GameStop has a really tight supply chain with um, even with PC parts to allow um, people who are in in the the PC building um, demographic to to give them some more info. Um, just stuff like that. I'd love to hear more about uh, more about that. What they can be available. I don't know if they're actually going to get into that much detail um, at the shareholders meeting. I believe they that may that's, not. Well, I think that's going to be happening later today at the earnings conference call. Yeah, I believe so. I also believe that we'll yeah. hear in some shape, way, or form today. Yeah. Uh, I remember that GameStop had a deal in place with Microsoft, and E3 is supposed to hit next weekend. I'm expecting to hear something more about that deal coming out either today or the coming weekend. Look, I can, um, I'm just gonna find this link so I can pull it up, but um, at GameStop, like the shareholder meeting, um, where is it here? Corporate governance, online investor kit, all right. Um, uh, um, the, the, so basically, um, oh, let, me, oh, let me link this here so that we can pull it up. So, what's going to happen at the shareholders meeting is mm -hmm. they like they already uh sent this um this is already out uh, this was their proxy um proxy statement and if you go to page three of that that PDF, are you sharing it uh, right. I, I i just sent the link to um to red so she should be oh i've got it here too yeah. yep okay so yeah if you scroll down to uh, page three yeah, right there. Yeah. No, a little bit, a little bit up. Yeah. So this is basically the notice of annual meeting. This is the only thing that's going to be discussed at this meeting today. So the purpose of this meeting will be to elect six directors, provide an advisory non-binding vote on the compensation of the named executive officers, ratify the committee's appointment of Deloitte uh, and Touche. So basically, uh, Deloitte and Touche are the um, auditors. So what happens is at every publicly, publicly traded company or any company that has a board, the board of directors has to vote on, or, or the shareholders have to vote on who's going to be the auditor. So they're going to vote to make Deloitte the auditor for their next financial statement, like their next annual statement, the 10K, and conduct a, 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 transact such other business if any 
as may properly come before the annual meeting and at any postponement or adjournment of the annual meeting. So I don't think that they're going to discuss anything other than what is here. It's basically just going to be a simple vote, a simple ratification, um, perhaps maybe answer some, some questions. Now shareholders who are uh, present will have uh, received an agenda. Um, the agenda would probably look something similar to this, um, but it, it won't be too too different. So the kinds of things that we are looking for, you know, the, the news about uh, e-commerce or um, website development or acquisitions or mergers, I don't think we're going to get that today. I don't. I, I sorry. At um, in 15 minutes, I think we're going to get that uh, in the earnings call. Possibly. Yeah, those are just things that I'm looking forward to hearing the company talk about. Um, I just kind of use shareholder meeting as the general thing, but yeah, at the the shareholder meeting. I would love to. I'd love to hear um, as many specific numbers as they can give. You know, um, but really looking forward to hearing what's going on with earnings. What happened to uh, no dates, Ado? Oh, no what dates. Do you mean with no dates. No numbers. I'm just teasing. Oh, no, they wow. just just tell right. no. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, just I'd, I'd really love to hear if they could give breadcrumbs like, you know, because they're going to record the vote and uh, it would be interesting if they could say what the pre vote count has been. Uh, I don't think we're going to get it, but here's the hoping. Here's the hoping. I mean, um, I think it would be amazing if someone, you know, jumped out of a giant birthday cake, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I, I think that this, this meeting is going to be as, as boring and dry as, as usual. I mean, that's usually how these things are because we, you know, we also have to remember that while we are interested in this and, you know, we, as an online community, we have our jokes and our memes and, and we like to have fun with it. There's also a lot of serious investors, here and you know people who are not involved with the community uh, who are also um, looking at this and I you know I think um, I think this is going to be a very very uh, highly scrutinized uh, meeting I yeah they have to watch what they're going to say because if they say yeah. anything uncouth or that could get them into legal trouble in any way shape or form yeah. I'm sure that anybody in a short position would use that to sue the company so I'm fairly sure they're going to have to watch exactly what they're going to say and how they're going to say it. And yeah. They're, so, they're basically going to have like everything that they're saying, I guarantee you will have been written by their lawyers and they're basically going to be reading off of the script. Like they're not yeah. going to say or do anything um, out of the ordinary. I don't think it's going to um, be, um, there's nothing, I mean, there's I, nothing I special going to go. I don't think there's anything special that's going to happen here because like you said, Ren, they want to make sure that nothing they say or do could be used um, potentially against them uh, in any future litigation. So we had someone throw up a, a question about them being able to, so once the vote comes through, and I'm assuming this is what the question was saying, um, once the vote comes through and they elect the directors, if they decide to then do a recount, the the decision for those directors would be held tentative, correct? And uh, pending the results of the recount. So, so uh, well, yes, yes and no. I mean, um, if we could just pull up. Um, Sorry, I love that bandana. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh that, bandana. that dude's awesome. This dude's awesome. <laughs> yes and no. So normally, if the um, if the vote was contested, so let's say that there were more uh, directors who were running for the board than positions were available, or let's say there were, um, uh, you know, someone who wanted to be chairman or, or whoever, if there was a contested vote, then there could be the potential to have like a, a share recall or, or a vote count or something. But in this case, because the vote is uncontested and they're basically running a slate, um, regardless of whether or not there is over voting, 
I'm like 99.9% confident that the board will be elected. So, but that's, that's assuming that they won't say they can choose not to accept the vote. Well, I mean, so they could choose not to accept the number of votes. So they could, they could come back and say, look, the, the number of votes is, inaccurate or you know we have more votes than than shares available however that would not necessarily impact who gets elected also that from a right. from a legal point of view if you look at number two providing an advisory non-binding vote that means that they can basically take the votes that they have received and the board themselves can make a decision based on the numbers they have received be it exceeding the float or not exceeding the float at the end of the day it's an advisor uh, advisory vote that we're casting as shareholders they're in no way legally obliged to uphold I, our votes sorry to interrupt apparently the okay. meeting started meeting is started is welcoming uh, everyone in the main room hey i've got a drop too i've got a meeting at work so uh, i'll catch up with you guys very soon see you guys okay. after all right so um because it's not allowed we're, we're not allowed to um live stream i'm not sure what uh how we're going to be sharing the information that will we be streaming i mean the rules say we we can't so i don't know if it's a good idea to to break the rules okay so we're being told that uh, we'll get information about the meeting after the fact so i think that's that's good because we obviously mm -hmm. don't want breaking rules but I think maybe while while we're waiting uh, to to get updates, um, we'll hopefully we'll get some text updates while we're we're uh, talking here. Um, <laughs> Red, could we could we just pull up the the link that I sent you uh, this um, post? Yes. So this post was written by someone named uh, Grace Sweats Every Day. Can't we stream? Uh, I mean, sure. Where's that stream coming from? I mean, if that's it's the not official. Out, that's the official stream from the GameStop. Uh, oh my gosh! Let's go ahead and stream it. Red. Yeah. Okay, so while we get the stream set Yeah, up, I'll take a second or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, so exciting. Yeah, I've been waiting for this for a whole five months, yet it feels like years. I know. It's uh, exciting times right now. Um, but so while, while we're waiting for that to, oh, there we go. Yeah, click on the close oh, and okay. there's a browser behind it. There we go. It'll still be a couple of moments, so. Okay, so George Sherman probably got there. Okay, oh, he's welcoming the main room, I see. Okay, so obviously he's in the room, you know, getting set up, getting ready. Um, so it will mm. start right at right at eleven. That makes sense. I was surprised when I heard that it was going to start early because of when, when. That's we normally not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so while we're waiting for that stream, um, so I just want to continue a little bit about what Ado was saying about uh, overvoting. So mm. I mean, obviously the the board, um, it's not contested. So so they're going to be voted in no matter what. The only issue really is is the number of shares. So I just want to scroll down to to the end part, like under the heading that says, OK, so how does this help? I um, re I cross posted this. So, yeah, right there. So this post was written by someone named you, Grace, Wex every day. And mm -hmm. uh, he's one of the lawyers that I met way back when I first started posting along with legalese. And Gray Sweats Every Day is actually a U.S. securities lawyer, so you know he knows the stuff. Um, oh, okay. There's another, yeah, there's another user actually, um, Captain's Log. She's also a securities lawyer, and and so I always pay attention to their posts because they know what they're talking about. So about 44, 
about a month ago, Grace Sweats um, wrote this excellent DD about the shareholder vote and um, you know what to expect if there's overvoting. So, you know, this is why I think people hate lawyers because sometimes we're party poopers. But I think it's important that we um, keep ourselves grounded and and manage our expectations. I know. So, <laughs> yeah. So he what he's saying is that if he was uh, you know on their board or if uh, you know he was their lawyer. Uh, he would say, since the board has hard evidence uh, of, of a minimum number of fraudulent shares that are outstanding, he would recommend that GameStop issue a press release announcing the results of the shareholders meeting um, and would include a note that the inspector of elections was required to correct the vote because, you know, however many number of million votes were cast, even though there are only 70 million shares uh, issued and outstanding. And, you know, he would add that the company will take all actions the board considers prudent to ensure the interests of its shareholders are protected and to maximize shareholder value. That's the mic drop. No mention of a short squeeze, all facts, so there's no liability yeah. associated with unproven claims. So this is where it gets really interesting because I know that we are all dying to know how many votes that are coming in how yeah. much is being overvoted but if i was GameStop, and if i was looking at this from the inside i would not share that information because that would give the shorters and the hedge funds information and a tool that they can use so keeping them in the dark but it's the best thing you can do exactly yeah and this is why he concludes this is why each shareholder should vote all of their shares without exception so basically by mm -hmm. by seeing that they had to correct the vote because of over voting this would put the sec and the new york stock exchange and basically everyone on notice that they know that something is going on but they're not going to tell them what and this is going to make them um worry even more i also just uh received message from Addo, and the stream i gave to red is unfortunately not the annual shareholders meeting there well, uh, that's uh, that's the earnings call uh, unfortunately uh, yeah so uh, unfortunately that's a mess up on my part sorry everybody uh, so we will have to do this basically via text to speech old school oh red red can i share what you just said red is sending uh, sending us some messages in the chat room okay so apparently pink uh pink has arrived at the shareholders meeting and oh she's on she's on the phone with pink and pink says that uh she talked to corporate and corporate at gamestop know who we are Wow. That's exciting. Ryan, if, if you're watching, send help. <laughs> Ryan, if you're watching, let us please uh, stream the shareholders meeting or <laughs> I mean, or give us something. Please, chairperson. If you need a Canadian lawyer, let me know. <laughs> also, you should probably rebrand re um, EB Games to GameStop. And we I, are always last to get the banana plushies here in Canada. So please help us with that as well. Notice me, senpai, basically. <laughs> <laughs> basically. I still can't believe he uh, he retweeted that. Um, the meme from uh, Butt Farm. Oh, my gosh. I didn't want to say his name. <laughs> I, I wanted to give him a shout out anyway because he's yeah. been doing so many memes for the community. He's been such a good guy. And basically, I, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to everybody that's part of the community who's being excellent, who's doing memes, and as, uh, on especially Butt Farm 69, dude. Thank you so much. Cocaine Kramer, thank you for the hilarious conversations you guys basically stir up. And 
we officially now have more apes in the stream than are in the building. Whoa. So, uh, yeah, if, if anybody's watching thinking, is it just me or a couple of people on the internet? No, it's, it's thousands, if not millions. <laughs> Almost 24 and a half thousand people are watching us right now, Bren, talking. That's crazy. Yep, I uh, remember years ago when I had anxiety talking in front of 10 people in my class, so uh, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the nice thing is that it's basically just, you know, me and you having a conversation, kind of, and everyone's just, like, listening in, so. But this is great. You know what, I'm, can I just say, when I first got involved and, you know, um, my sister introduced, well, my sister introduced me to the sub, um, you know, I've been a Redditor for a long time, um, and, you know, I started uh, familiar, familiarizing myself with everything back in February and was reading your morning post. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this guy is great. Never in a million years would I have ever even imagined that three or four months later. Oh, sorry. Okay. Red <laughs> needs to, sorry, I'm just reading these messages from, from Red. Sorry, I got distracted there. Okay. Never no in like a million years would I thought that like three or four months later, not only would I be part of a mod team of such an amazing community, but that I would be speaking with um, the anchor man for the Daily News. Like it's just, it's just insane. Like life is just so weird. Um, but yeah, it's been an incredible journey. And like you said, um, it's more than just just the Ma team and, and Red. I mean, yes, Red has been working insanely hard, and so has yeah. you, Red, and, and everyone else. But I think what really inspires all of us to be excellent to each other is is each other. Is we're just we inspire each other, and we give yeah. back to the community. Like like the Knights of New, for example. Like I mean, it was only a matter of time before. An online group of gamers started creating little guilds for the, for each other, right? <laughs> I was actually <laughs> waiting for that, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I made a flare post last night and I was flaring them. And it, you know, it's just, it, it, it makes people feel involved and it makes people feel like they are part of a community. And it's just, it's just incredible to see everyone coming out and supporting in their own way. So mm. it's just, yeah. Yeah, but in all honesty, we have changed a lot because in January, everything was on Wall Street bets. They have a different community. They have a different ethos. They have a different mentality in their vernacular and the way of communicating. And, and I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just different. And then you had RGME, which also had a different mindset. And now we have Super Stonk. And we have a mentality of, you know, you don't rip each other apart. Even, for example, I have no stake in AMC. I know pe other people have. And there were people trying to make camps, basically divide, it, divide the apes. You're either AMC or GME. And I personally spoke to a couple of them, like, dudes, if you enjoy AMC and you see value there, go do it. What? Why do you need the opinion of somebody else? We're all apes, you know? different trees different branches at the end of the day do your thing and i believe in gme specifically but there are other people who believe in other things and the thing is that normally people would be at each other's throat but i think the great thing that happened with our sub is that everybody went like yeah okay i don't like seeing another stock mentioned on this sub but you know what good for you and when AMC rallied a week or so ago, they uh, basically said, okay, I'm, I'm glad for AMC. You know, I have no dog in this race or no horse, no horse in this race, but I'm glad for them that they've made money on it. And that's the mentality that I actually really like, that they're not knocking each other, they're helping each other. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and, you know, it's all coming from a place of supporting each other. And even when you look at the DD, it's coming from all these different angles. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, we're all supporting each other and people are asking questions. And, um, you know, it's, it's just amazing to see how inclusive everyone is. Uh, I'm seeing some, so Pink is, Pink is getting set up. She's going to uh, be able to, to get started soon. 
Um, in the meantime, apparently there's a new DFB tweet. Am I reading the comments on YouTube right here? Let us check. Yeah, he tweeted four minutes ago. Calling it heads ago. or tails from No Country from Old Men. Ooh, we should um, we should put that up. And play that. Here. Let me get oh, reds on it. So awesome. guys, just a, just a quick um, quick thing. Okay, wait, let's watch this first. The volume on that. It may be for uh, for the stream, but we're not hearing it most likely. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Just call it. So if we go through some of the comments below, someone is wondering if this is a margin call. Uh, someone commented. Call to the vote. Yeah, yeah. No country for short hedge hedges. <laughs> uh, oh, I love this community. I know. Yeah, so that that's um that's his tweet. Call it. You need to call it. Yep. Let's I can't let's call hope. it for you. It wouldn't be fair. We think yeah, this I'm, is uh, gonna be a margin call. Uh, so pink pink is giving hmm. us a few updates meeting is going on right now, but We're waiting to get permission to even get information and, and stream something or share something GME coin call. Oh, oh, someone said GME coin GameStop coin. Okay. How was yes, the NFT? The, the NFT. Yeah, well, we already know that that's a thing. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I've tried looking into it. I, I tried actually engrossing myself into the entire um, Bitcoin thing and crypto and Ethereum and Doge and all that other stuff. And I'm going to be honest, it's, I have no idea what's going on. I bought Doge years ago as like a joke. <laughs> and then like I totally forgot that I had it. And then when I got into GME, I sold my Doge for for GME so I could buy more GME. And that was like right before it jumped from I think like uh, seven cents to like thirty three cents or something. But I don't hmm. care. I I mean I bought that like I think I bought that back in 2012 or something and it was just like sitting there in a wallet that I completely forgotten about. So yeah. No, I Sorry, yeah. I uh, the thing is that um what I was actually looking into as far as I could understand and and there're probably going to be a lot of people who can uh are going to correct me on this because again I have zero actual knowledge of cryptocurrencies but bitcoin is basically digital gold you store money there and it goes up ethereum is basically um something with technology and and that's most uh, that's where the gme nft is going to be focused in because the gme nft is going to be its own thing it's a non-fungible token and what i understood from that is that uh, GME is basically creating a coin. Nobody can create anything like it. GME is in control of that. And they could use it for all sorts of different stuff. They can use it for the power-up rewards. They can use it for the uh, for a crypto dividend if they choose to do so. Or for something completely different, like, for example, selling digital games. Yeah, and well, so... So I think that's I think that's where they're going with this because um, in one of my most recent posts where I was look where I was talking about um, uh, I think you mentioned that in your daily news thread, Ren, it was comparing GameStop's SEC filings and sort mm. of the narrative of when shorters started shorting them um, and now you know how their most recent um, filing. 
uh, changed changed the game. And one of the things, one, so one of the common um, risks that they had, business risks that they had in their SEC filing was the inability to sell pre-owned games or, or digital games. So this has yep. been a common theme in their SEC filings. And I'm, I wonder, I, I'm going to see if I can pull that up um, and share that somehow. Uh, I have the um, post somewhere because I think that's really, oh, I can, I can share a Chrome top. Thank you. Guys, can we just give a big shout out to, to Red here? Because Red is basically behind the scenes, uh, doing as everything always. as always, and um, <clears throat> running, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, let me just go fix something here. Okay, so I'm going to try and share a Chrome tab here. I wonder if I can like share the actual image though. Um, I want to find it first. Macro talent pressures, uh, important development, densify, successfully master fund. Okay, where is it? There's something about sales. Where do they talk about oh video game industry, economic conditions? Um, here we go. I believe that it's this one. So let me just share the screen. Share screen. Chrome tab. Okay. So here, so this is where we're uh, comparing the um, business risks that GameStop files in their um, SEC filings every year. I'm just going to expand this and minimize. I'm just going to expand my Chrome tab here. Um, so as you can see, some of the risks that they talk about is video game industry has been, uh, you know, cyclical, affected by next generation consoles, techno technological advances in the delivery and types of video games and PC entertainment software. Um, uh, failure to keep pace with um, customer delay. No, wait, that's not the one that I'm looking for. Let me see if I can find it because they, they do I... specifically mention it. Maybe it's here. Uh, can you guys see this? Yes. Um, okay. We, I just got a confirmation for something in the Spartans channel from a tractor. There are 70 million, 777, 778 outstanding shares presenting more than the majority of all shares confirmed more than the majority. What? Yes, they're what? confirmed. They just confirmed the number. Oh, of shares. no, I'm sorry. No numbers. They have, they have confirmed there is more, uh, they're presenting more than a majority of the shares. Seems oh, that the, it seems that the number I previously gave, it might be from something else because it's a busy conversation. It's going really fast. The, again, <laughs> trying to keep up. Okay. So I, I more than the float is outstanding right now. Sorry. I don't even know what, what to say to that right now. Who, who confirmed that? Um, we have a separate channel that oh, I, uh, look at the we, price! Ren! what? Look at the price. Look at, look at the, look at the, the, the stream. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. more than the outstanding shares as of right now, because 70 million was available and there are more than the available shares have, have seem to be voted with. Confirmed more than the majority. Again, I'm going off of information that other people are feeding me. There are some people who are currently in the meeting or privy to the information uh, via uh, call. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. I just I just turned on the I just I just went to the Discord because I haven't been I've been focusing on um, sharing this info. Okay, so Matt Wilder is the inspector of elections. Um, Seventy million was the amount of shares issued out at April fifteenth. And then what are we, what did we hear? That was somewhere else. Where did you? Wait one second. Again, everybody watching, sorry for this, but a lot of things are happening at the same time. Yeah, sorry guys. Not, neither of us were supposed to even be here right now, but we just jumped on and we're just trying to manage everything. And we're getting messages from all over, but we will, oh, there we go. Thing is we actually had some beyond the grounds we have a pixel and pink cats on acid at the scene right now but again GameStop told us to not videotape inside it we chose to actually respect that because let's be honest we respect the company we work within their wishes and therefore everything is done via text or stuff like that so yeah, it's it's a little bit slower than we actually hoped it for, uh, it to be because we hoped uh, Pink was able to actually be in there and do some sort of reporting. Unfortunately, we can't do that, so we're going old school. See us as your old school type of radio newscasters. Um, I did uh, I did get an update from Red though that Pink was uh, was interviewed by CNBC. I have a lot of things to say, and none of them are available to speak here in stream. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. Okay. So, we're getting updates here. Why is my Discord being so... Announcement cool? from Ryan himself. Oh. Okay, so, okay, so while we're waiting for that announcement to come in... They announced how many votes for the board and Deloitte's accounting. Cohen is speaking right now. <laughs> I believe so. He's thanking us, us, the investors. Ryan Cohen is now officially the chairman of the board at GameStop. Congratulations, Chair Cohen. Well earned. I wonder if you uh, could repeat uh, that, that chair tweet. Seriously, after the, all this is over, I'm going to print that on a poster and send it to him. I'm still waiting to, to get confirmation. I know that everything is happening so fast here. Mm -hmm. um, I think Adam is going to jump back in now. I think his meeting is, is over. There we go. Welcome back, Ado. Hey, buddy. Yeah, hey, guys. OK, so. Ryan Cohen just, just said, as, oh, uh, wait, sorry, I have to double check this. Yeah, I jumped in right when you were giving that news. So can you confirm? Right, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Ryan Cohen just said, as my dad would say, buckle up, meeting is adjourned. What? Boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Okay, so before this is taken in too many ways, right? Wait, first of all, I would like to thank everybody in the Spartan channel, everybody who was there at the meeting, feeding us information, getting us uh, detailed things that other people did not know yet. Thank you so much, especially Giant Space Member 593 and Attractor. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, everyone. Man. <clears throat> oh my gosh, this has been surreal. And Thank you, everyone. 
All right, can, can we now get some confirmation on what was said about the vote specifically? Who said yeah. it and what was said? As far as I can read from this, is that they're not giving out a vote count as of right now. Um, it's happening a little bit too fast to tap. Uh, they announce how many votes for the board of Deloitte for accounting, right? Talking an announcement from Ryan Cohen himself. Um, no vote count. He's speaking now, uh, thanking us, chairman of the board. Uh, no picture. He's just on screen, just as a voice. As my dad would say, buckle up. And then we have a confirmation that RC indeed said, buckle up. The meeting was adjourned. And he thanked us all for being great. OK. Dude, that's that's killer. Um, so yeah, before we get too hyped about it, like buckle up can mean a, a boatload of things. Um, yeah, it can mean bumpy ride. It can mean space jump. It can mean a hundred things. It can yeah, it can mean direction but, uh, of the company is going to be, you know. It, but I'm it gonna, can, I'm going to be honest here. I'm bullish on it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Anything Brian Cohen <laughs> said. <I'd be> bullish. <laughs> And, and uh, let's, let's remember, guys, Pink Pink was at the meeting. She's getting set up, so she's going to be joining yes. us soon to give us yep. all the details and updates. Yeah. yeah. Pink's hands are, like, oh, no, no, on fire. I thought she was at the meeting. Oh, she is. She had, no, she had car trouble, unfortunately. Oh, no. Oh, oh that's no. Really nice. There she is. Well, Hi, guys. Surprise. Hi, Surprise. Hey, I'm at GameStop HQ with the apes. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Oh, she is there. Got body okay. surf, Dan. Hold on. Okay, so hold on. Pink, pink, pink. Were you, were you there? Yeah, I've been here. Oh. I actually, the Very reason good. that I didn't get on the stream is because I was talking to CNBC. No, that's totally fine. Glad so to hear it. So Say hi to CNBC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> so I heard that uh, Cohen just adjourned the meeting with uh, an inspirational quote from his dad. Is that right? Yeah. Buckle, Buckle up. up. Let's go. Woo! Man, that is crazy. Okay, so can we get the break? Yeah, you were there. Let's do switch my camera right there. Let me see if I can flip this. Uh, can my camera, camera, facing that. Come on. Oh, gotcha. Now we got Body Surf Dan on the cameraman. I want to show him the table, though. Oh, bullish. I love it. We need apes in the chairs, though. To Sorry, be fair, can you guys sit down, life. please? Because you guys make the, you make the scene. That's awesome. I like the stomp. <laughs> Changed my mind. Love it. Okay, so, so can we get a breakdown of what happened at the meeting? What was... Who said what about the vote? Welcome to GameStop HQ, everybody. So yeah. what we have so far, we, we've we been out here. So I haven't actually, some of the apes have been listening in. And I just caught the, the end quote from, from Ryan Cohen about buckle up. Um, I did talk to some of the corporate over in the parking lot before it started. They were super cool, said we could stream here. Very supportive. When I asked them if they'd ever heard of Super Stonk, he said, of course I've heard of Super Stonk. So there you go. looks like we got some more apes rolling up here. Perfect. Let's see if we can, Hank, let's yes. see if we can find someone who was inside and who can tell us what was said about the book. Yeah. On it. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut my seed real quick. I'm going to go over there and see. I'll be back. All right. Um, as far well, as I good. can read from the Spartans page, again, guys, thank you very much. Um, RC is not currently divulging his strategy, which is very cool in my opinion, because it's a secret recipe and he's not sharing it, which is usually from my experience in business, it's usually good because something is brewing. Yeah, I mean, that, that would, that seems, seems uh, intuitive. No, but I mean in the sense that we have thought of several options. We have thought about several things that could happen. And usually if people are already onto that, you just say it. But the Confirm fact it. that he's yeah. remaining silent about that gives me the idea that there's more than meets the eye right now. Um, so I need to – I also kind of want to talk about this. The Did anybody talk about share count? Should, does, was there any sort of information yes. that was given yes. on that? 
Okay. Can we? Because I missed that while I was on my it, meeting. Um, wait. Let me scroll right back, and I can say it again, so I don't mispronounce. Um, they have seventy million seven hundred seventy-seven seven hundred seventy-eight shares outstanding. What they issued present more than majority of all share confirmed more than majority. Um. So, okay. So. So there are. Oh, there, so are there are more shares. shares. Yeah, yes. more votes. They confirmed there are more shares. That's a hundred percent. No, no, no. They confirmed there are more votes than shares. That's what I'm saying. Yes. That's more than a hundred percent. Yeah. If that's a direct quote, if you have that and that's source, that's it. It's. Let me tag you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> juggling four that's things. What we're trying to confirm one hundred. Like that's what was said. We just want to hear it from others. Now, no numbers were given, and this is why. Like, I, like, like we were discussing before the shareholders meeting. It needs I must to have be misheard. Audited. It needs to be audited so that they can be a hundred percent certain about this. Now, again, nope. so hold not- on. So, I mean, we're we're talking also. We're talking about like, what, did they say more than the seventy million? More votes they- than shares outstanding. More votes than shares outstanding. If that that's what I'm saying, that's what we need to get clarification because yes. if we're saying more than majority majority is just 50 percent. no no it wasn't majority they said more votes than outstanding shares oh shit that's huge that's huge <laughs> <laughs> that, again yeah. we are currently still waiting on confirmation on this we're going by second hand information where uh, pink is currently live on scene trying to find somebody who was inside and who is willing to confirm this for us so we can make sure that what we're saying right now is factually 100%, so we're not spreading BS. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, now, my yeah. heart my heart is pounding, but like yeah. it needs well, to be. That's, I need that's... to hear someone from GameStop say we had more votes than we had shares outstanding, and if I hear that, that's it. That's, that's, yep. That's been us Getting us. a loan. Don't care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When Ren first said that, Otto, I think both of us just like paused for two, three minutes, not knowing what to even do or say, because we were, again, we were not expecting this. Normally this stuff doesn't come out until four days, four business days after. Um, yeah, you'll, yeah. Get the, you'll get the specifics in that 8K, um, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's, a very, it's a very vague way of saying, the, or a very vague way of answering the question we all have, which is, what was the voter turnout? And they, they're they not going to come out and say it was exactly 145 or 420% more than, than shares outstanding. But what they can tell you is there were more sh- votes than, than we have shares. And that's really all we need. Because that's, that's, that's going awesome. back to the 66% figure that we were looking at from last year. Yeah, that's literally all we need. Um, because again, they don't they can't give out numbers because there's liability here. So whatever numbers they give out will have to be audited by oh, yeah. by the um, auditing company. Um, so so that's why they're not giving out precise numbers. But which is what Carl's job was, right? They find someone like Carl, Carl Hagberg, and they find yeah. someone like Carl to then come in and do an independent, especially for scenarios or situations like this when yeah you have more. So on this sort of stuff, I really think that Jimmy kind of missed out on not just streaming this or having a voice thing streamable or something like that. So there are a lot of people and I, I guess I'm seeing a lot of people in chat right now that are saying the quote was not about the, I, I don't know. The quote was well, not that, about being over. Well, that's what we're trying to confirm. Um, yeah. We have, we're getting messages and we just want to make sure that what we heard or what what's being told to us is what was, was mm. properly conveyed. Um, I really wish. I mean, if Ryan Cohen is watching this, you know, maybe you should tweet tweet Red Chess Queen, and at least maybe you can come on and, and give us the details. I think we would like that. <laughs> Pink seems to have lost connections, so we're trying to see if we can get. To I'm get just glad it. Pink's okay. Yeah. yeah, I was. I was like, I was. I was worried. Concerned this morning. Oh my god. Turns for out she's having a better not, time than all of us. Yep. For the people not knowing, Pink, this morning we lost contact for about an hour or two, I believe. And we were just 
worried because we're not used to not hearing back. She was on the scene. We were waiting for feedback. But yeah, it's uh, it was a difficult morning. <laughs> OK, some Lurie, Lurie, you have something going on there. Do I? Ryan, Ryan posted something on Twitter or somebody. I don't know. Check Discord. There's some news coming out right now. What, which channel? There's so uh, many messages. Yeah. Shark sent out something about. Oh, yeah. So that was. Um, someone posted a video. Oh, 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 okay. Maybe. We, can we, can we <laughs> have the meetings over? Uh, well, you know what? Someone posted this on Twitter, so it's fair game at this point. It's not like we did it. It's not like we told anyone. So. Somebody on somebody on the live feed is saying, like, Ooh. Stephen Kelly is saying, parents are there, can confirm. The quote was overvoted, more votes than shares. Ah, That's just one that I, I, don't, I, I don't know. It's all hearsay for me until. Wait, let's, let's pull up this Twitter link and see what this Twitter link is saying. Um, I'm going to share my tab here. Give me one moment. Just to hold it up. Um, share. Oh, no, it's right there. Okay. Can we, can we watch that? Where's the, where's the volume on that? There we go. I think there's a certain thing you have to display and share audio or there may not be audio with it. With the tweet thing. That has audio. Yeah, it does. But uh, in order for Red to get it, okay. it's our boy. <laughs> He's like, I am not entertained. Wait, let me, see, let me see this other one here. Yeah, the one yeah. below that one. The one below that one. No, below this one. Yeah, there's another. Yeah, yeah there you go. From the beginning. Can't hear anything. No. Okay, let me try sharing my screen because I have it up as well. Maybe, maybe you guys will be able to hear it through the microphone. All right, short destroyer, give us the solace. Let me know when my screen is being it's shared. A bunch of people are saying no video. Don't show the video. Okay. Turn the video off. Uh, wait, let me then add a little bit. So, wait. yeah, we just need a confirmation on that. One second. I mean, we don't have to play it, but we don't have to share it. But no, people are saying it's, bro it's breaking the rules and don't show the video and it's yep. not legal. And so. All right. Yeah, don't want to be. If it's if it's in from the shareholder meeting, that's why Pink was recording from outside the shareholder meeting. Can have. So basically, if shorts shorts destroyer or shorts dem demolisher or whatever, if you're listening and you hear that, like you might you might want to just pull that off of Twitter, um, avoid you a lawsuit. I don't think it's a, a lawsuit thing. It's more of a showing respect kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Don't be that guy. Yeah. I mean, we, th we thank everybody for feeding information, but at the end of the day, it's their company, it's their meeting, and we're going to respect that. Oh. Hey, how about that price action, though? I know, right? Did we hit 320? Did we break 320? Oh, guys. Uh, guys. 1999. Oh, wait. Not wrong. Of course. <laughs> so. Let me go back to Twitter here. I need to get off soon because I have <laughs> to get some work. Let me see if I can find something here. Because all we really want to do is to is to figure out who said what about the vote count. Yeah, and I, coincidentally, that was the time when I was not here. <laughs> it's like the most interesting part of the whole thing. Um, if if somebody, if anybody 
can confirm that someone from GameStop or someone in that meeting heard one of two yeah. things more than a majority is more than 50 percent or more than the votes outstanding is the big one that we're looking for i i think in all honesty at this point that language is going to be semantics until we get an official 8k filing i don't think we're going to get specifics but in all well, honesty if someone I has written this out if this is legal speak and that that's a very very big f up if somebody said that without thinking um i'm waiting for that 8k to come out and say we had hundreds of percent hundreds of percent more than mm -hmm. what we expected i'm yeah. literally expecting hundreds of percentage more than but that in that aspect more than a majority if it outstands a float it's still more than a majority that's legalese well, but it was more than more than majority last year too yeah so if there were more votes than shares outstanding who's this guy uh we have giant uh 110 i believe giant. he was oh, also wow. in uh you're muted giant, bro. you're muted yeah sorry we're just walking uh out we're, we're trying to find um was it body surfing dan from the discord but yeah we just left How the was it? oh it was exciting very short though full pun intended oh yeah uh, okay yeah. were you in the were you in the room yes what did they, can you give us any confirmation about uh what they said on voter count or share count uh it's okay <laughs> it's okay if you can't god the tease is unreal right <laughs> was it they announced 70 million something shares were confirmed out by april 15th which was uh the record date and then afterwards they had confirmed that uh i think what was the language it was uh, yeah. Majority. Yeah, there was a more than majority of the shares voted. Yeah. Right. More than majority of shares voted. So it, it wasn't more than the shares outstanding voted. Yeah, I'm not. Right. I, I'm blanking on the language just because. But yeah, it seemed like they had more. Like trying to infer that there were... Yeah, it seemed like they were trying to infer that there were more than seventy million. Okay, because that's the thing. Inferring that there are more than 70 million versus more than a majority, majority is 50% of the total vote. So if they're saying that there was a more than majority voter turnout, then they're just saying there are more than 35 million votes. Yeah. But again, First, if it exceeds the float, it's more than 35 million. So that's the legalese. But um, I also have from somebody else who was present um, in person or by proxy more than the majority of all shares that are entitled to cast notes. So yeah, that would be the same thing. That would be yeah. more than fifty percent of the vote return. Okay, so we're gonna have to look at the AK. We're gonna have to look at the yeah. AK. And if it says anything under than hundred percent, I'm skeptical. I'll be honest. With Likewise, you. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how you can have that many traded and then the 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 number of involvement and activation that we've had within the voting community to go out and vote. I mean, we've had brokers turn on the ability to vote for people that haven't been able to vote in the past. Mm -hmm. I so think I shorted. Having... Hi. How are there. you doing? How are you doing, dude? To... Oh. Doing well. Hello. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty interesting meeting. Um, I heard uh, 53 million at one point. I, I can't really confirm what that was, but um, somebody actually wrote down the actual, um, like transcribed what they said. Let me see if I can get it for you. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> lost him because yeah it, it seems that the connection there is uh, a real problem
this has me like I'm sweating. <laughs> no one has pen sweating. and paper and just write something down. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm I'm literally like scrolling through Twitter right now trying to see if I can find some updates. But I feel like this is this is what it must be like to be like a news panel on CNN or somewhere where you're live streaming news and trying to get information. Like this is the one piece of info that we need to know is what was said specifically oh, about the vote count. As soon as we oh, tried to get know. Shorty in here, the lo hold on, Red saying the location the apes were at were kicked out being private property. They don't really want media there. Wow, that's great. So, Look okay. We're the media now. Yeah. Um, GameStop did not, or GameStop did suggest to set up there. And then somebody told them that it was private property. Okay. All right. So regardless, aside from all this, um, they're going to go find a new spot to set up at. We That's what's really coming down to. So if they did give, if what Shorty was saying was true, and they did give some sort of um, vote, it, like number, mm -hmm. a tally for the vote, being at 53, I'm still skeptical about it. Um, I don't know how they... If, I don't know how everybody wasn't jumping all over that figure. If uh, he might have misheard or something like that. But if something. we, uh, if I look at what uh, Lurie has a presented earlier, normally you don't give out the numbers on a shareholder meeting. Therefore, I don't expect them to be there or being said. And I expect them in the 8K in a couple of days. But even if they come back saying, "Yeah, we only got a hundred percent." How many people have doubled their position since 15th of April? I know I have. So, yeah. We also, I mean, have, to, we also have to remember that um, there's the total share number available, but there's also the float, right? Because you have, um, oh, what's this? That's from somebody from the Discord that says okay. there are present at this meeting in person or by proxy more than the majority of all the shares then that are entitled to cast notes Votes. 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 sorry that's it yeah. that's it because i was that's just going to say you have you know institutional holders as well you have people with shares who are not entitled to vote so what they're saying is that of the number of shares that can be voted Mm. We have more. Yeah. More than the majority of all shares that are entitled to cast votes. It's so still ambiguous to me. It's yeah. still <laughs> ambiguous. Yeah. It's so like no matter what way you try, but it could go either way that way, right? It's better. It's different than saying we received less than the total votes outstanding. This is just or, legalese yes. at this point. Yes. This exactly. is right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a CYA I, thing. We'll get the numbers on the A or on I the uh, K. Yeah. This is literally them. So again, this is them communicating, not just to us, but to shorters, that they are aware of what is going on. And this is them basically saying, we know what's going on, but we need to make sure that it's properly audited by a third party because anything we say or do uh, could be used against us in court. So this is them sending a message to us to let us know that we've done our job. More than the majority of all shares that are entitled to cast votes, that's that's pretty big. That's mm -hmm. pretty big. So I'm, I think this is all the confirmation bias we really need. Hold on. I'm wondering if um, if uh, Giant, Giant is able to give us a summary of the meeting experience, like a walkthrough, you know, kind of going through the whole thing so that uh, apes can know what it was like. Yeah, sure. So essentially showed up about an hour early and it was already getting pretty packed there. Uh, it was a very GameStop was very accommodating. All you had to do was show your pro, uh, some sort of indicator that you were a shareholder and your photo ID. Walked in, said hi. They wrote down some of your information. Got a seat. If you're lucky enough, you got a little swag bag, which is nice. Um, and yeah, we just kind of hung out for about an hour until they started the meeting. At which point, George Sherman very kindly uh, got up and said, thank you all for coming. 
We, and essentially, uh, they just went through a few legalese basis of like, hey, we're starting the meeting, appointing, uh, running through the, the different agenda, which was um, just the three items you had to vote on, the board of directors, the, um, the, the compensation for the board, and then, uh, what is it, uh, appointing that firm. The auditor. Yes. Renewing their auditor, Deloitte. And that was pretty much the meeting. And then at the very end, Ryan Cohen, uh, they announced to the board, like, do you have anything else you would like to say? Ryan Cohen took the mic or took the Zoom mic and uh, went through saying, can't give out any details. We don't want to actually, um, you know, show our hand. You want it to be very... Uh, he didn't want to show his hand in terms of business strategy quite yet. He knows we're all excited, wanting to know what uh, GameStop's going to do. And then, right. but uh, I think someone wrote down the quote very well. It was, uh, he said something from his dad was sit down and buckle up. Get That's ready, awesome. buckle up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So quick question then. Um, in order to have, in order to validate the vote, they have to have more than 50% right i'm not sure about that because i i'm not a lawyer i don't know i haven't read no it was, it was <laughs> more directed to, <laughs> what, what do you yeah. mean by validate the votes so if you have a vote and i mean it, in order to confirm the vote doesn't there have to be a majority turnout no it only depends on whether or not the vote is contested right like yeah. if you're voting in a number of people and it's an uncontested vote. I mean, all you need is one one vote for them to be voted in. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out why they would say what they said then. What information could that be provided? Like what would where would be the benefit in saying we had more than fifty percent? At this point in time, from a legal perspective, they have to announce if they had a low show up of votes or a high show up of votes. This was high because even if you look at the situation, a lot of apes could not vote right now. But in the end, a lot of people have voted because a lot of people are now involved with the company. And there is more than a majority. And that's legally, legally basic, basically saying, okay, screw it. Um, we have more than a majority because if you have a float of 35 million or 40 million or 50 million, you have half of that and you have one vote over, you have to say we have a majority of the vote. But at the same time, if you have, for example, a total amount of outstanding shares of 70 million, but 100 million have voted, you still have a majority of the vote because you can't get into specifics until you have them audited or formed in your AK. Okay. At least that's what I've come to understand. Right. Also, during the meeting, they did go over uh, when they were going through the different uh, items that were voted on. I don't think they gave a percentage for the board in terms of who voted, but I'm pretty sure for the uh, the second item, the compensation, they had said something over 90 percent of people had voted in favor. So that's just saying that's just saying of the votes, you have 90 percent voting in favor. That's yeah. and that was just, I think legalese and uh ceremony of saying yes this is approved yeah yeah okay all right well cool i'm uh i'm just gonna wait for the 8k and look at the number as um, it comes out giant so, well i have you here with um I've, I've heard a couple of things about matt wilder being the auditor of the company or the inspection inspector of elections did you hear anything about that yes uh he was announced uh the general counsel or the head general counsel said uh, appointed Matt Wilder as uh, auditor of the vote. Okay, thank you. Because I, I've heard a couple of conflicting things. I saw Twitter, I saw Discord, I saw a couple of others, and we didn't know for sure, but we do now. Thank you. Yeah, he was appointed by name. Oh, was appointed by name. Awesome. Cool. Uh, no, I do I think to go back to um, to your question about why why would GameStop announce what they did about over majority of, of the outstanding votes? Yeah. I mean, it's the same reason as to why would Ryan Cohen 
retweet a picture of himself as a as a chair, right? Or mm -hmm. why would GameStop um, post a picture of of an astronaut on the moon? I think I think all of this is their way of communicating with us. I mean, they've I think ever since Ryan got involved, um, there's been a fundamental shift in communication. Yeah. And this is their way of letting us know that we know what's going on. We are aware and we recognize you and, you know, we know, we acknowledge you. So, yeah, so the, the, the long story short, what I'm looking for is, is it doesn't have any semblance or it doesn't have any, it, it's just literally is what it is. And I'm going to look at uh, what comes out on the 8K to be, you know, the, the definitive number. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't saying before I got too hyped up saying they confirmed it at the shareholder meeting that there were more than 70 million votes cast. What, what I know that, so again, this is reading between the lines. So if you look at what they said, they did not mm -hmm. say that there was an overvote. However, what they did confirm is that there was not an undervote. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so without yeah. actually without actually saying it, because one of our I guess biggest concerns was what happens if the not enough people can vote exactly. So they have basically confirmed to us that that is not the case, which is awesome. Yeah. 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 Also, cool. um, Giant. Now that we have you, have they said anything about a CEO? Uh, at at during the meeting, no, they didn't say anything about CEO. Damn. I saw that George Sherman was the sitting CEO at the time. Did they specifically say he is the sitting CEO? No. Uh, he just announced himself as CEO of GameStop because I don't think they had taken that away from him yet. Okay. It's just getting the wording right. But that wouldn't be something to be discussed at the shareholders meeting anyway because that would be yeah. a decision um, that that you're getting, that the board would make, the board of directors. Yep, I'm just making sure that if anything yeah. like that announced, because I can see a lot of questions popping up through the high-speed YouTube comments um, about CEO, CEO, CEO. So I thought, yeah. just ask it, and yeah. people will know. Yeah, that would be something that yeah the board determines, and then uh, they would they would issue a press release if that was the case. I just want to respond to some of the comments. Uh, some people are saying that what I said is not a hundred percent true. Um, so. Can we pull up the quote again? Because I want to, I want to analyze this, and I want to explain my <laughs> reasoning behind behind this. Because um, GameStop seems to be very good at sharing information by not saying things. And you know, one one example is when I initially uh, analyzed their 2020 SEC filing versus their 2021 SEC filing. Yeah, the, the napkin quote, please, Red. When I analyzed that um, in their 2020 filing, they had uh, in, a, a risk factor of indebtedness that could lead to bankruptcy. But in their 2021 filing, they removed that risk factor completely. And I theorized that the reason they've removed this risk factor of, of going into debt is because they're not going to go into debt. And at that point, I was told, oh, you're reading too much into this, et cetera, et cetera. But then as we know now, GameStop is clearly not in debt. They paid off all their creditor notes and they actually have half a billion dollars of cash. So let's go back and look at this. So there are present at this meeting in person or by proxy more than the majority of all shares that are entitled to cast votes. So what's important here is shares that are entitled to cast votes. So Otto and Ren, you, you know, will probably know this a bit more than me. Um, who is entitled to vote? So this is, this is again, I mean, I'm looking at it on Investopedia right now. It's literally just confirming that a controlling interest has cast their vote. Yeah. Like the decisions that were made were done by a controlling majority uh, interest of the company. It has nothing to do with taking the number of votes that were actually made and comparing that to what's on this napkin. It's literally just saying... Thus, somebody owning more than 50% of a company's shares can affect the majority of the vote and is said to have controlling interest in the firm. That's that's literally all it's saying, that they're confirming that the votes that were cast were more than the majority of, of 
shares that were available or votes. Yeah. Right, but I, I think the question here is who is in which shares are entitled to cast votes because there's a difference between the total number of shares versus the float. So right? now you're getting into common stock and like preferred stock or cl different classes of stock. Um, as yeah. far as I know, the, the common shares outstanding with GameStop are all vote voting eligible. I don't think they have any preferred shares outstanding. I think at this point in time, GameStop cannot neither confirm nor deny the number of votes that we have received as a company. So we have a few comments here. So one person is saying more than the majority of all shares. So, I mean, some people think that's more than 100%. But again, I mean, that could, that could be 50 plus one or it could be 100%. All I know for sure is that it's not less than the majority. I mean, I, at this point, that's that's all I can think of. I, you know, I think this is the best possible news we could get. Yeah, um, that's great. Yeah, I think this is exactly what what we wanted. Um, this is them giving us an, uh, a hint and an Easter egg um, without putting themselves into any sort of liability. And I think in, in four days, we're going to know. Four business days, It'll take a couple of days. Yes, we will. But Hope I think... Uh, call tonight. Yeah, I think we're going to wrap up for now. Um, yeah. Because we still have... The, two hours, right? Jesus. Yeah, we've, we've almost taken the two hours mark. Uh, we will be back later with uh, Monkey Business. And uh, we'll be earning, going over the earnings call and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what I'll be in that too, the uh, monkey business thing. Likewise. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. Awesome. All right. Thank, Thank you very you much. Everyone. Good deal. We'll see you in a little bit. All right. All right. See you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Bye, Giant. Everyone. Appreciate you, man. Bye. As he popped off. <laughs>